one of the reasons why the Sahaba, their statements are taken as marji' or masdar, a source, is because they were the people of the language who the Quran, whom the Qur'an was revealed to. And the Qur'an addressed them in their own language. So for that reason, they would use the Lugha to understand the Qur'an. In fact, they would encourage others to do so. There's a narration which Ibn Abbas, he said that Umar bin Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Ta'allamu al-shair, fa'inna fihi mahasina tabtaghi. Naam. He said, learn poetry, Arabic poetry. For verily within it are good aspects, good characteristics, yani mahasin, good things, which you desire, which you need, which you have to learn and implement that will bring you closer to your Lord. And he says, وَفِيهِ hikma lil hukama," And also within the shi'r is wisdom for the wise and that it guides to a makarim al-akhlaq and it guides to good character. Uh, Ibn Abbas, he also said, al-shi'r diwanun arab that shi'r, poetry, is the diwan of the Arab. It is the, the register of the Arab. Yani it's, it's something that preserved their history, preserved their lugha, their language. And it is the first science of the Arab. Yani it's the first thing which they uh, preserved in terms of knowledge. Khair. Ibn Abbas also said, Alaykum bi shi'r jahiliya. Upon you is to take poetry from the pre-Islamic times, we know that one of the things those people, the Arabs, took pride in was their lugha. They were known to be fusaha, extremely eloquent. That's why when the Prophet ﷺ came, Allah Azza wa revealed to him the Qur'an, yani a mu'jizah, the Qur'an, and its eloquence in the language was something in which the Arabs, although they were considered to be the best of the best in terms of lugha, they were unable to match. And for that reason, it was a miracle. It was a miracle, linguistically as well as in meaning. During that time of Jahiliya, you have much poetry filled with high-level vocabulary and meanings. They would have these poetry battles, competitions, and the best of the poems would be hung on the Kaaba. They would be written in, as they say, Dhahab al Yani golden water, and it will be hung on the Kaaba due to the eloquence, the high level of the language. These are known as the Mu'allaqat al sabr the seven poems that have that are hung on the Kaaba. All right, some say Al Ashr, they say ten, others say four. Among them was Imr Qais, and others from the Shu'ara of Jahiliya. In fact, Ibn Uthaymin Rahim Allah Ta'ala he said that Abu Talib. He had a poem as well. He had a diwan in which he wrote as well, which is called Lamia, Lamia to Abi Talib. And that in reality, although it wasn't hung on the Kaaba, he said that due to its eloquence, it should have been hung among, it should have been counted among these different poems. So um, Ibn Abbas says, Alaykum bishir jahiliya, and to learn these poems. And to this day, alhamdulillah, they've been preserved and they're studied in universities, Umm Qura. And uh, the mahad we have here is taught in some of masajid outside of school because it's filled with vocabulary that will help an individual understand the Quran, understand the Quran. Okay? For that reason, Ibn Abbas he said, Alaikum bi shi'r jahiliya, to learn this shi'r, to learn this poetry. Okay, because it will help you with understanding the Quran. And we'll see examples of this in a few moments. In fact, Ibn Abbas, he said, إِذَا قَرَأَ أَحَدُكُمْ شَيْئًا مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ If one of you recites something from the Qur'an, anything from the Qur'an, فَلَمْ يَدْرِي مَا تَفْسِيرَهُ And he doesn't know what is the meaning, the, the, the tafsir of that verse, فَلْيَتَمَسَّهُ فِي الشِّعْرِ Then let him return and, and use shi'r to help him in understanding the meaning of that word in the Qur'an. فَإِنَّهُ دِيْوَانُ Arab. For verily, it is the register of the Arab. Yani it is the thing that preserves the language of the Arab. Khair. And we have examples, many examples. And I hope, um, perhaps one day, inshallah ta'ala, maybe next class, we'll go more detail regarding this. Yani tafsir al-Quran via lugha. If we have time for that. But um, there are many examples of, of the Sahaba returning back to shi'r. In helping them understand the Quran. 
One example of this is second Khalifa of Islam, Umar bin Khattab. May Allah be pleased with him, excuse me. He was on the member and he said, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, ma taqulunu fi qawni lahi azza wa jalla. What do you say about the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Remember we spoke about this verse in the last class or the class before that? Yani what is the meaning of takhawwuf? Yani Umar bin Khattab, he didn't understand what is the meaning of takhawwuf in this particular verse. Okay, that, or perhaps Allah will take them upon takhawwuf. فَسَكَتَ Nas. So the people, they remain quiet. فَقَالَ Sheikh مِنْ Bani Hudayl. So a sheikh, an elder individual from the tribe of Hudayl, he said to Umar bin Khattab, هِيَ لُغَتُنَا يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ It is our language, yani it is our dialect. Yani we use this word in our lugha. He said, التَّخَوُّفْ تَنَقُّسْ That تَخَوُّفْ takes the meaning of تَنَقُّسْ yani To diminish. فَخَرَجَ رَجُلٌ فَقَالْ So a man left and he said, يَا فُلَان of so-and-so what have you done with your debt? This person had a particular debt and he's being asked, what happened? what's the status of it? The man replied, تَخَوَّفْتُهُ يعني تَنَقَّسْتُهُ I lessened it, meaning paid some of it off. But it still remains. يعني, but it has become smaller. فَرَجَعَ فَأَخْبَرَ Umar. So the man returned back and he informed Umar of this instance. Him using the meaning تَخَوَّفْ to take the meaning of تَنَقَّسْتُهُ Look what Umar bin Khattab said. Did he just accept it just like that? Did he say, okay, that's your language, so we accept it? لا. Rather he said, أَتَعْرِفُ الْعَرَبُ ذَلِكَ فِي أَشْعَارِهِمْ Do the Arab, yani your people, those who speak that particular dialect, do they know this meaning in their poetry? Allahu Akbar. So yani poetry, it was used as delil, right? It was delil amongst them for the meanings of words, Allahu Akbar. Right, and this is why those statements we read earlier from Ibn Abbas and Umar bin Khattab saying learn poetry is something important. It's something important. Khair. So the man said, Naam, yes. Uh, Abu Kabir al Hudali, one of our poets, Abu Kabir al Hudali, he said in a line of poetry, Yasifu Naqatan, Takhawwafa al Rahlu minha tamikan qaridan, kama takhawwafa uda nabaati safanu. Here in this line of poetry, he's describing his naqa, camel, riding beast. And he's saying that whenever the naqa has the al-kathr to say it, yani, it travels a lot, it's constantly moving. What will happen is the fat, the shaham, the fat on the animal would decrease, right? And there'll be more muscles, okay? So he's describing the condition of the naqa as, it, as it's constantly moving. Constantly traveling, that the fat he says, تَخَوَّفَ يعني تَنَقَّصَ that the fat, fat is diminishing. So the verse reads, أَوْ يَأْخُذَهُمْ عَلَى تَخَوُّفٍ يعني, or that he would not seize them gradually, wasting and تَنَقُّس and what's intended here? Wasting their wealth and health. Allahu Akbar. Yani, that one of the punishments for these individuals who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he gradually allows them to waste away their wealth and their health. SubhanAllah bihamdi. Tayyib. So, yani here is an example of what? Using shi'r to understand a word used in the Qur'an. Alright? So, takhawwafa takes the meaning tanaqqasa. This is one example. Another example of the, the amount of importance they gave to shi'r is a famous story with Ibn Abbas and the Khawarij. There was a person from among the Khawarij, a deviant sect in Islam. His name was Nafi bin Azraq. He wanted to debate Ibn Abbas regarding yani, ayat in the Quran. Ayat in the Quran. So he said, he said to his companion, Najda bin Uwaymir, let's go to Ibn Abbas and ask him, a, um, ask him about the book of Allah. So they stood next to Ibn Abbas and they said to him, نريد أن نسألك عن أشياء من كتاب الله عز وجل فتفسره لنا. 
we want to ask you about um, things in the Quran from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A couple of ayat from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will provide tafsir of it for us or to us. Okay? And then they also said, but that wasn't it. They also made a condition. وَتَأْتِينَ بِمِسْدَاقِهِ مِنْ كَلَامِ Arab. And you will, yani, every tafsir you bring from the book of, yani, about the book of Allah, we want you to bring a misdaq, yani, uh, an evidence from the speech of the Arab. Yani, from shi'r, from poetry. Bring evidence from poetry. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ إِنَّمَا أَنزَلَ الْقُرْآنِ بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيٍ مُبِينٍ For indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, عَزَّ وَجَلَّ he only revealed the Qur'an with the clear Arabic tongue. Ibn Abbas, he responded, سَأَلَانِي عَمَّا بَدَى لَكُمَا نَتَّجِدَا عِلْمَهُ عِنْدِي حَاضِرًا إِنشَاءَ He says, you, both of you ask me about this particular thing, yani to provide tafsir of the Qur'an and to bring delir from the shi'r, the kalam al-Arab, and you will find that knowledge with me present, inshallah ta'ala. Meaning, khalas, let's begin. Right? He, he didn't back down from the challenge. Allahu Akbar. Right? This is Ibn Abbas. So may Allah be pleased with him. May Allah be pleased with him. Now, he was ready for the challenge. So they said, the first, the first verse they asked about, they said, Ya Ibn Abbas, akhbirna an qawlihi ta'ala, or yani an qawli Allahi azza wa jalla, the statement of Allah, yani inform us about the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an al-yamini wa an al-shimali izin, the surah so ma'arij. An al-yamini wa an al-shimali izin. He said, what is the uh, izin? What is the meaning of izin here? The verse says, and on the right and on the left, izin. And they're asking, what is the meaning of izin here? So Ibn Abbas, he said, izin takes the meaning of hilakur rifaq. Yani, it refers to uh, separate groups. Tayyib. They responded, وَهَلْ تَعْرِفُ Arab ذَلِكَ And did the Arab know this? Yani, does the Arab know that izin takes the meaning of Separate groups. And Hilakul Rifaq, Ibn Abbas said, Naam, Ama Samirta Ubaid ibn Abras, Yaqul. Yes, did you not hear the statement of Ubaid ibn Abras, who's a shahid from the Shu'ara, in which he said, Fajau Yuhrauna ilayhi hatta Yakunu hawla min bidihi izina. Izina is used in the line, which takes the meaning of Fajau Yuhrauna ilayhi hatta, speaking about a particular king. And the people, they rush forward, they rush towards him. Until they were all around his mimbar. And he said, Izina. The people were gathered around his mimbar, Izina. Yani taking the meaning of in groups. All right, there were people gathered around him in groups. Khair. So this is an example of him using um, the kalam al shir as the leel for. The understanding of a word in the Quran. But he didn't stop there. Nafi, he didn't stop there, right? You think that would be it, khalas, go home? Nah. He continued. He asked Ibn Abbas another question regarding the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ma'idah. وَبَتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ The statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And any need that you have, then seek it from him. Yani, what is the meaning of the wasila in this particular verse? Ibn Abbas said that al wasila takes the meaning of al haja, yani a need. Any, any need that you have, seek it from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything you need, seek it from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, wasila, take it to mean a haja. Okay? The men, they replied, Awa ta'rifu al-Arab dhalik? Did the Arab know this? Yani, is this known amongst them? He says, Naam. Amma sami'ta antara al-Abasi. Did you not hear uh, antara al-Abasi, who's another shayat from the shu'ara? What, uh, and he said, "Inna al-rijal lahum ilayki wasila." In which he said, "Inna al-rijal lahum ilayki wasila." Yani, indeed, the men they have a need for you. Speaking to a woman, okay. In this particular line, all right. Wasila here takes the meaning of haja. All right. Nafid didn't give up. He kept asking him questions and questions and questions, and every question, Ibn Abbas provided evidence from. Shi'r from the um, poetry of Jahiliyyah, of the Shu'ara in Jahiliyyah. Khair. How many ayat do you think? He asked, Yani Nafir asked Ibn Abbas. How many ayat? Question. Ten, twenty, 
30. What do you guys think? This occurred for 250 ayat. SubhanAllah. 250 ayat, Ibn Abbas gave the meaning and he mentioned a line of poetry to back up his claim. Allah Akbar. This was the knowledge of Ibn Abbas. Now you understand why he was called Hibrul Ummah. SubhanAllah, Bihamdi. His vast knowledge. How much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, gave him insight to the Quran, right? Because the Prophet Sallallahu made dua for him, وَعَلِّمْهُ tawil And teach him the tafsir of the Quran. But yani, this story shows us the importance the Sahaba gave to shi'r, to poetry, to the Arabic language. And Imam ash he mentions in his famous book called Al-Muwafaqat, that there's a direct connection between the Arabic language and understanding the deen. If a person's understanding of the Arabic language is weak, then his understanding of the deen will be weak as well. If it is intermediate, he has intermediate skills in the Arabic language, then his level of knowledge of the deen will be intermediate. And if he's an expert, okay, mutaqaddim, and his understanding the Arabic language, then their understanding will be on an expert level in regards to the deen. SubhanAllah bihamdi. Right? In fact, uh, Shaykhuna Abdul Salam al may Allah preserve him, he mentioned to us one time that some of the self they would say to know the level of the fuqaha pay attention to their speech yani you would know the amount of deficiency in their fiqh depending on how much mistakes they make in their kalam in their lugha subhanallah bihamdi subhanallah bihamdi yani if they make mistakes grammar um their usage of words etc then you know that's their level that's how much mistakes they will have in their fiqh of the deen SubhanAllah bihamdi. Showing the importance of the Arabic language. There's no way, there's no way that a person will have a good understanding of the deen unless they study the deen in the language it was revealed. Take a look at what happened to the Nasara. Right? What language did Isa alayhi salam and his companions at the time or apostles and the people at that time, what, what language did they speak? Allahu A'lam. Some people say Aramaic. Right? Allah knows best if that's true. Yani, but Al-Muhim, it was, it was definitely not English. The Bible has changed and trans, has been translated. There has become many changes in their, um, in their book. Okay? Why? Why are there so many changes in their book? Because they did not preserve their language. Ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions that uh, the first thing that leads to the, the destruction. Okay? Ibn Khaldun also mentions this in his Muqaddama as well. Um, he mentions that the first thing that leads to the destruction of a nation is the language. Once they do not give importance to their language, that will lead to destruction of that particular nation. Yani once they start to take, adopt other people's languages in their daily usage, okay, and their understanding, etc., and their original language, the original language in which that nation was founded upon, is forgotten and not used, that leads to the destruction of the nation. SubhanAllah bihamdi. And that's why, yani, that's one of the uh, blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted us, our ummah. Yani he's preserved our sharia via the Qur'an. Okay? And in the Qur'an, of course, is the Arabic language. Allah preserved this language. And because he preserved this language, the deen preserved as well. But once the people leave off the lugha, as we see throughout time, subhanAllah, the they spoke about that. Yani that people did not go astray until they started to learn the language of Aristotle. They started to learn, you know, these languages and the, their ideas, etc. That's when the people started to become astray. Right? So, you know, us as Muslims, we should give importance to learning this lugha as well. If you we want to have a good understanding of our deen, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us all. Right?